This short video is intended as an introduction to Audacity audio software. So let me take you straight to the website. Um, this is the website here, audacityteam.org. And here you'll find the uh, application to download. It's, as it says here, free open source cross-platform audio software. So you'll find a download for Windows, Mac and Linux. There's also documentation here. Um, the manual I would suggest you download um, and it'll open in your browser so you have it available offline. Um, I've installed the Mac version for my computer. I'm on an iMac here. Um, so let me launch that. When you launch the application, you get a new uh, project. There's no soundtracks, nothing on the, the screen. So we'll save this as demo. In a project folder. Um, I can also open the manual here, which I had downloaded. And that's opening, as you can see here, from my computer, not online. So I can access it offline. This is really an essential part of Audacity. And you can navigate to any of these uh, numbered parts of the screen, the, the, the interface. Um, if you click on any one of these, it'll bring you directly to that uh, part of the manual. So very useful. Uh, really well laid out manual. There's a tour guide, tutorials and tips. Uh, um, all very useful and uh, getting started is a good place to actually start and, and step through some basics. What I will do just today on this video is to demonstrate very quickly some elements of uh, Audacity. It's a recording software, an editing software, mixing software, and it also does file conversion. And so you can output your files in different formats depending on what your requirements are. To make a recording, I'm just using the internal microphone on my iMac. Um, not necessarily the best quality sound, but for the purposes, I think it'll be okay. Um, I can check the level of that by clicking on this little icon here and start monitoring. And you can see the icons on microphone, so it makes sense, I think. You can see the level there is about peaking up around the minus six, minus eight, maybe. So that'll do for, for, for the moment for recording. Um, to start recording, I simply hit the record button. Uh, so I'll do that now. Now you can see that uh, a waveform has appeared here on a track, an audio track. It's a mono track because we set it up as mono here. Um, and they say smart ears using the built-in microphone. So I'll just record a few seconds just for the demonstration purposes. And to stop this recording, I simply use the stop button over here on the transport. So I'll do that now. And we can see that the, the waveform is there. I can't see the whole waveform in the window. If I go back and forward, you'll find that it's longer than the, the window. I can use another little tool up here, fit project to width. And there we go. So we now can see the entire recording. I can play that back and um, simply go to the head of it here using the, the, the positioning keys here and then hit play. Now you can see that uh, a waveform has appeared here on a track, an audio track. It's a mono track because we set it up as mono here. Um, and they say it's smart ears using the built in microphone. So I'll just record a few seconds just for the demonstration purposes. And to stop this recording, I simply use the stop button over here on the transport. So I'll do that now. Okay, so we have a, a recording done. You can also import audio. I've got an, a music track here, so let's import that. Now you can see the physical height of these uh, waveforms is very different. And if I play the soundtrack again, uh, both tracks together, you may learn here the music is much louder than the voice. Let me just do that. So it's quite clear here that we can't hear the voice any longer, so we need to adjust the volume. Um, to do this, we can use some of the tools up here. Uh, this tool here is the envelope tool, and if we click there, you can see these little blue bars appear on all the tracks. And we want to bring down this track, so click and drag reduces the sound. And visually, you can see it uh, also indicates what the, the sound level might be like. We can play again. Now you can see that the uh, waveform has appeared here on it. 
So we can also do a little bit of work on the voice track. So let's select that again using the selection tool here. We can select this track. I'm going to select the entire track. And I'm going to use an effect from the effects panel here. And that's normalize. This will maximize the, the, the gain of the, the signal or the, the, the volume of the, the recording without clipping it. So let's do that. And you'll see the waveform uh, get much larger, I think. And there we go. So you can see a lot, a lot more um, level there than it was. And we might just play that again. Now you can see that uh, a waveform has appeared here on a track, an audio track. It's a mod. So that's a little bit louder again. There's highs and lows in this. And sometimes you might want to uh, use a compressor to bring up the low parts without uh, overdriving the the higher parts. So we can do it again. We have this selected, but click and select with the selection tool. And another effect could be a compressor. So we'll add that. Um, this is set up already, but um, there's a lot about this in the manual and using them, but we'll just use the settings up there for the moment. And again, you can see the waveform has changed. What's changed here is that the lower parts have got higher and the, the, the highest parts have stayed the same. So let's play that again. Now you can see that uh, a waveform has appeared here on a track, an audio track. So we now have a lot more volume on the voice and the, the music is still in the background, but at a healthy level. What I'm going to do now is go back to the uh, envelope tool and just pull that audio down a tiny little bit just from the peaks there. And just play that again. Now you can see that uh, a waveform has appeared here on a track, an audio track. It's a mono track because we've set And you see up here on the meters on this side here, um, this is the playback meter. We used the, the microphone meter earlier just to check the incoming recording. This is the playback meter. Um, so I'll play that again. You'll just see the peaks are in around here, um, which is kind of what we're looking for. So let's play that again. Now you can see that uh, a waveform has appeared here on a track, an audio track. It's a mono track because we've set it up as mono here. Okay, so that's uh, maybe a voiceover or a recording with some music in the background. Uh, you probably wouldn't be playing music across a, a voice in that way, but you might want to do some other things in a, in a recording, which will be to split the audio um, and possibly move it around in different places, change the order of it. So let's, uh, let's just do that. I can take uh, this track here using the, the same tool again, the selection tool click a point on the track where I want to split and then say edit split. Now I can use the third tool here which is the time shift tool and if I select that I can now move these two pieces independently of each other. I can't get them past each other uh, but if I did want to change the order I could go select a piece that I want to move using the selection tool, select that piece of audio and then edit. I now have an option split new and it'll move it onto a new track. I'll just bring that track up to the top here so where we can see it. So now I've got the, the, the audio split onto two tracks and I have the option of moving it ahead of the other tracks so or changing the order of events. I'll just undo that. So that's something that could be done if, if desired. Um, what we have done is split it here and we're using the shift tool. So I'll just shift it a little bit this way. So we've created a gap between two pieces of audio. We may want the sound to fade up here and fade down again. Uh, when the voice is, is, is there. So let's um, let's have a look at that. But first what I might do is just get rid of some of this music track, which I don't seem to need all of that. So using the selection tool, click and drag to the end and delete. I'm going to use my fit to width icon again here and that will just spread it out so I can see a little bit more clearly. So I want to raise the audio in, in this little gap here and maybe we'll just move these two over the top of the audio there a little bit more. So there's that. And we could also take off the end of some of these pieces. There's a little click at the end there. That was me hitting the stop button. So we get rid of that. Click and drag, click and drag. And we do a click and drag. It's rid of the, the, the excess uh, pieces of audio track there. And we just center these up here. So there's a little gap at the beginning. A gap here, it does obviously gap at the end, so we might get rid of some more of this audio track we don't really need. And we'll fit window again, so there we go. So let's uh, raise this audio here. I'll select using the selection tool, I'll click a marker here so I can see where I am. I will then use the envelope tool again to put in markers here. So a marker left, 
and right of that. Um, I might do another one here. So now we have little markers which we can adjust the volume of the, the, the audio with. So let's click and drag and bring that one up. So you can see the fade up curve appearing there. So that's the audio level, an indication of the audio level fading up at the end of this. And we can click and drag along to, to fade earlier. Um, go there to fade out later. So let's just play a little piece of that, maybe the intro piece here. I can use the selection tool to click on the timeline to play a little piece and hit play. Now you can see that uh, a waveform has appeared here on a track, an audio track. It's a mono track because we've set it up as mono here. Um, and they say it's smart here is using the built-in microphone. So I'll just record a few seconds just for the demonstration purposes. And to stop this recording, I simply use the stop button over here on the transport. So I'll do that now. Okay, so you can hear the, the sound is fading up and down there. We've achieved that. There's a little uh, noise at the end there. I can just see it visually here. You can use the zoom tool here plus to zoom in. And we can go to the end of the track to look at it. You can see this little bump here. This is the, a click I've heard. So use the selection tool, select and again delete uh, off the end of the the file i use my fit to width again so we can see the end what i can do is also add a fade here another effect maybe so selection tool select an area that i want to fade so let's fade that a bit more and add an effect fade out effect and you'll see that's faded a little little more we can use this selection tool here again to pick a point on the line and hit play so i'll do that now but that's a very basic uh, look at the, the, the recording uh, and editing and adding some effects in Audacity. So what we need to do is save this project. Uh, we just hit save. We can also then export this audio if you want this track out. We can use the WAV setting here. Um, with the pop-up we then have some choices here. I'm going to save it as an Apple type file, AIFF. And I'm going to put it into my exports folder and I'm going to call it uh, mix and um, let's say save and that's there you get an option here to add metadata now an important feature of audacity is the history and it's up here under view history um, and using this history is very important because if you want to change anything and go back you can only do it while you have this history available to you we've created a new project recorded some audio we imported the music track, we adjusted the volume, we applied normalization and compression to the voice track. And so you can see everything we've done here along the way. I can step back through that. So if I could go back to just where I imported the audio here, select that, you can see that that's the imported audio and the levels have been changed. I could go back to the recorded audio prior to importing the, the music track. And I can step to any one of these, these points along the history right back to the very end. The last thing we did was applied a fade out effect. The thing with this is once you close the file, you lose the history. So um, what you can do is you can file and save project as a lossless copy of the project. And whatever point you're at in the history, if you save that, that's the levels, that's the EQ, that's the effects that will be saved at that time. So it's a good idea to save lossless uh, copies of the project at different stages as you work through the project. So that's really uh, Audacity in a nutshell. There's a lot more to it, of course. Um, if you have any questions, you can drop me an email and I'll put the uh, website uh, link for Audacity on the screen now.